Folks, we got a northern water snake here within the first 15 minutes of the hike. Looks like an adult, probably a female, and odds are pretty good she's been nipped by a predator. Check this out. Actually, I've been nipped, yeah. You're gorgeous. You're amazing. Look at you. And you see, you've relaxed. You see, like they realize, like, you know what? This guy's gonna be okay. Look at the coloration there. Okay, we're gonna release you now, buddy. You ready to say goodbye to this guy? Yeah. Good luck. Good luck. Here we find our second species of snake the same day. This is a northern ringneck snake. It's an adult. They don't get much bigger than this. This is, looks like a female. And look at this under the same rock. A marbled salamander. This guy looked more like a crack in a rock than a snake. The eastern black rat snake. So the racer has more of a gray. Now you could still see when this thing was born, it had more of a white pattern on the top of it. Yeah. Oh, you didn't like that. Come on, buddy. It's okay. Stay with my <gasps> Andy said, don't move to <laughs> Sam. Sam and I were just like, yeah, we're like talking, we're jawboning. You could feel him. His muscles moving. Yeah. Strong chance this is a male, folks. See the long, skinny tail? Much longer and skinnier. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to attempt to show you what this thing can do. Well, I can't guarantee it because it's really not, heat. it's just not warmed up enough. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. You are watching Expedition New England. Stick with us. We have an eastern hog nose. This is unbelievable. He's right there. He's right there. Eastern hog nose, oh, folks. He's a beauty. He's a oh, beauty. Looks beauty. like he just wow. shed. Yeah. Just shed. I'm going to come from behind because I, I don't want him to get down the hill. Mm -hmm. Then I'll never get him, just in case. Folks, this, this is incredible. Look at this gorgeous snake. Now you see his body looks like it's somewhat, is he coming out of a hole? No, that's just a short. Look at, he's puffing up a little bit. Oh, look at him, look at him, he's puffing up. Look at him. This is crazy, he's like double the width he normally would be. And one of the most amazing aspects of this snake is that they have learned how to play dead. They wipe themselves with their excrement and turn upside down 
to look like they're dead. Any creature will just avoid eating something that smells so bad, and that's how they survive and attack. Look at this gorgeous animal. It's okay, buddy. This is unbelievable species, potentially number four within an hour. Look at you. I haven't seen a garter snake yet. <laughs> wow, look at the lateral flattening that it has. The eastern hognose snake is very seldom encountered. As a matter of fact, even if you did, it's got so many color variations, greenish, reddish, brownish, pattern, checkered. Unless you're a trained herpetologist, you may never even know you saw an eastern hognose snake. These guys eat almost exclusively toads. And each June, like right about now, the female will lay eggs anywhere from eight to 40. No, leave them be. Just don't move your feet, okay? Muskiest. Oh, yeah. You just totally blasted. <laughs> so the eastern hognose is a snake that's really on the decline here. Any kind of habitat alteration or change, they will leave. They won't come back. And of course, they do look a little coppery. They look like a copperhead. So oftentimes, they're just, they're killed. Just out of fear. I don't, I don't, I don't, snake. I don't see that as a copperhead at all. No, I would say it's a you can, I guess, you can cobra imitation. Oh, he's yeah. cool. Yeah. Hey, you really gotta give him. this guy enough I, I i just uh, just uh, this is remarkable this doesn't happen you don't plan a snake event and then change the date and and see anything normally you change the date and you see nothing so we're going to put this back right where we found it let's get right over here i'm actually almost wondering if we should put it over here just a little bit away from where a, a hawk or something what do you think right over here release that beauty right there good luck buddy Beauty. <laughs> Look at this beauty. Oh. <laughs> Look at you. Oh. How would he crowd him? He's gonna try to close up. And so nice. folks, this is an eastern box turtle. So this turtle has the ability to completely close itself off from a predator it's got a hinge on the on the the plastron you see the hinge it can literally you couldn't even fit a a needle or a tiny little uh, claw through that so these turtles have developed a way to completely protect themselves and that's why they're still here it's because they can do that Behind us is the most gigantic snapping turtle I've ever seen in my life. We've got to go in and we've got to try to grab it. A snapping turtle? <laughs> oh. Look at his head. <laughs> it's him now. He's freaking gigantic. <laughs> He's gigantic, buddy. Okay, let's go catch him. <laughs> you get him! You get him! Get him! Get him! <laughs> 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 He's gorgeous! <laughs> Look at this beauty! It's okay, buddy. Stay here. Oh my god! He's gorgeous. Look at him. Look at him. He's gorgeous. Stay here, buddy. Stay with us. Come on. Stay with us. Stay with us. Film him, buddy. Stay. Get you. It's okay, buddy. He's gorgeous. <laughs> He's gorgeous. Come on, buddy. Okay, buddy. Okay, buddy. It's okay. Oh 
my god. Dad. Come on over here, buddy. Come on. <laughs> Dad. Come on over. Here. Get right up on him. It's probably a female. So it's a girl. Probably a girl. Daddy. It's okay, buddy. She's gorgeous. Okay, go get her, girl. We did it, buddy. We did it. The most amazing find of the. You can imagine the huge snapping turtle. Yeah. These flags right behind where that giant snapping turtle was represent all the fallen soldiers. These are the fallen soldiers. They died. These people died trying to protect our country. What's that, buddy? Wow, a lot of people died in the war. They did. Folks, we're going to spot number two. I'm a little lost. I think it's, uh, I think we gotta take a right. We're in Southern Connecticut, actually technically Guilford, Connecticut, searching for reptiles this Memorial Day. We've already visited a very, very emotional spot where what looked to be like hundreds of American flags were laid to memorialize the people that died for this country. Just because we're not at the parade doesn't mean we're not respecting that. have been alive on this planet longer than we have, race. Yeah, and some of them got, ex got extinct. Well, extinction, you may think, is bad, right? Yeah. But honestly, extinction is a part of this gigantic process called yeah. evolution. Yeah. Like, things evolve, yeah. they have their day, then they become extinct. Hi, Ava Tucker here with Expedition New England. Before we take you any further along this wild adventure with Scott and Race, let's take a closer look at extinction. Evolutionary scientists have captured a broad understanding of all species on Earth, past and present, and determined based on the fossil record that all life forms have an average lifespan. I'm not talking about a particular person's lifespan. We know people live about 88 years on average. I'm talking about an entire species and its estimated lifespan from origination to extinction is 1 million years, for example. The reptiles in general have survived for over 300 million years, but a specific species of turtle like the snapping turtle has existed for 40 million years in the basic form it now exists. 40 million years. That's eight times as long as people have existed. But how long, on average, will a particular species of turtle survive until it goes extinct? Up until just a few hundred years ago, that answer was fairly easy to estimate. The planet had seen five mass extinctions and each one was created by planetary forces. Volcanic activity and severe climactic changes were the prime influences. But now it's our species, Homo sapiens, that is the first living, breathing life form on Earth that is causing a mass extinction. At present rates of habitat reduction, some biologists have determined 25% of species will go extinct in 50 years. This means we are creating the sixth mass extinction, 
you and I. Oh boy, you okay? So how long is our species, Homo sapiens, estimated to survive? A particular mammal species will survive for about one million years, but this average is deceiving. Mammals have been known to survive for 10 million years, and right now, we Homo sapiens are about five million years into our timeline. The question is, Will we continue to alter the Earth at such a tremendous rate and wipe out 90% of the diverse life we depend upon to maintain balance? Or will we slow down and begin to reverse our direction? Expedition New England, stick with us and find out. We've just been looking for black rats or black racers or an eastern hognose for the last, what do you say, half hour? Hmm. What did we find? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So folks, the bottom line is when you think about extinction and you think about creatures that still exist today, the only animals that really are still here are the ones that have been able to regenerate fast enough to outcompete us for food. And the ones that didn't, which you don't know about because nobody talks about, are the megafauna. Saber-tooth cats. Never in his wildest dreams had Scott thought he would one day step foot on the Galapagos Islands. It seemed like an untouchable place steeped in so much history with Darwin's name all over it. Just of all the islands, you can see the lava flows as if they were here yesterday. I've never been on lava like After that. After a brief encounter with bright orange Sally Lightfoot crabs, Scott witnesses another dream come true. Marine iguanas swimming with the classic serpentine action as a means of locomotion. And take a look at these guys basking up in the warm winter sun. Each island has its own unique species of marine iguana. So only a few miles away, a distinctly different species of marine iguana is thriving under different conditions. Then, only a hundred yards away, Ceci Bell gives us a rare opportunity to examine the remains of a whale that perished back in 2002. It's unknown what species of whale this is, but looking at the vertebrae gives us a real clear understanding of how all mammals are put together, including us. Where did the whale come from? The ocean. From they started land. on the land. Okay, they started off land. Then they took into the water, and all they do is they use their tail to swim, so they don't need their front anymore, so that was all reduced. Okay. I've seen fossils, I've been to museums, like, I can get my mind around what they are, but to actually see the fossil remains of a whale and to walk on what was lava only a couple hundred years ago and is now solidified into rock, it's just beyond my own comprehension. Lizards everywhere. We've got evidence of green sea turtle activity. Their females are laying eggs on this very beach. This is Santa Cruz Island, Galapagos Islands. Look at this. These sea turtles will only lay their eggs nocturnally in the dead of night. So you'll never see this during the day. 
We've got green sea turtles right out here in the surf. They're too far away to show you. But the males and the females are hooking up right now and they're breeding. This is incredible. We've got a nesting site. April is the time on Santa Cruz Island where they are more abundant. Oh, there's no teeth, buddy. I know, but look at its nose. It's kind of like a beak. Yeah, it is. So the eastern box turtle is a species that is slowly getting, basically, uh, removed from our habitat. It doesn't live in water. It doesn't live in water, no. It lives on land. So the eastern box turtle is, is really getting decimated by our consistent and slow sprawl of development. Every time you put a road in, you will see where you basically, or a subdivision, you will see where these turtles once attempted to live, they get pushed out, they start crossing roads, and it's very common to see them attempt to find a new habitat, and they get squashed by cars. Scott Tucker here with Race August Tucker. We have this amazing eastern black rat snake we just encountered. There's insects swarming all around us. There's people with all kinds of motorized uh, leaf blowers around us. Hopefully you can actually hear what we're saying. This is the most amazing snake in New England. Misunderstood. Many people think that these things are scary and they're venomous, but they're not, right, Race? Yeah, but sometimes they bite. We got a giant gar snake back at home, and he bit me two times once. Snakes will bite. Anything with a mouth will bite. But this guy is not interested in biting me. He's much more interested in what? Um. Uh. I don't know. He's probably much more interested in escaping me. <laughs> He doesn't want to be with me, but he's actually tasting the air. If you can look at this, his tongue, he's tasting the air. He smells my bad breath. I never brushed my teeth after I ate. <laughs> oh, he's looking right at me. So the Eastern black rat snake is very common here in Connecticut. And it is a rat eater, a mouse eater, little squirrels. And rat eat and, um, and a uh, chipmunk eater? Probably would eat a chipmunk or two, without a doubt. They're completely harmless to humans, and they're a valuable part of the environment. We need them here to keep rodents in check. So if you ever encounter a beautiful black rat snake like this, you just watch it, let it go. Odds are it's been there for 20 years if it gets this size. And first when my dad found this snake, it was shedding its skin near a, near a tree. And he also found a ringneck snake under a rock near a pond. Look at this guy. He's right on top of my head. He loves me. He loves me. You can see evidence of the shed right down here. Look at look at how strong his muscles are. Look at this. Look at how strong he is. He's actually sticking out like a stick right off the edge of me, trying to get into that tree. Yeah. <laughs>